Hey all, here are OS Reviews. You're watching our hands-on review of the Billy K S N58. This is a low-cost fitness tracker slash smartwatch that sells for about $22, so very inexpensive. It's waterproof, has an optical heart rate sensor, but just like other low-cost watches we've seen in the past, it doesn't have additional features like built-in GPS, for example, so it can't track your location precisely on a map, but gives you some of the essentials. Here's some stock images of what it looks like. It does also track your sleep, your distance walked, calories burned, and the strap itself is also removable as well. So you can swap it for a different design if it wears out. It's IP68 rated for waterproof. The display measures 1.3 inches, and the battery life will last you for about one week before you need to recharge it again. And it can also detect your blood pressure and blood oxygen level, which is actually pretty cool. And otherwise, it's not a full touch screen, as I'll show you guys in a moment, but has just one point below the display that is touch sensitive. It's using a Nordic processor underneath and just gives you some very simple sports and exercises that it can track. Definitely not as advanced or feature packed as say an Android Wear device because again the price here is just a fraction of a more premium wearable. The packaging is very simple. We have a QR code that you can scan to download the companion app. Packaging contents include the smartwatch itself. We have a quick user manual that tells you how to set it up. We also have a screwdriver here, which can be used to actually tighten up the sides or even remove the module from this uh, watch band. However, to switch out the straps, you don't really need the screwdriver. It's just like any other smartwatch. You simply need to pull on the small latch. So kind of interesting that they give you a screw if you do want to completely disassemble it. And finally, here is the charging cable. It's simply magnetic and attaches onto the rear, snatches into place, and then charges the band up in around one hour or so. Taking a closer look at the design of the smartwatch next, it is a relatively slim profile, as you can see here. It's also very lightweight. So as far as wearables are concerned, it's not something that's going to be too difficult to kind of wear on a daily basis. It doesn't really get in the way, even if you have smaller wrists or hands, which is definitely good. As a quick size comparison, here it is with a Mobvoi TicWatch Pro. It has about the same diameter on the front, but it is but it's much smaller in terms of the uh, footprint from the side. So if we turn to the profile, you can see how much thinner it is. The watch itself is made out of a tempered glass on the front, 2.5D, which is curved off at the edges. And then the body itself is made out of a polycarbonate plastic with some chrome and aluminum accents on the sides. Optical heart rate sensor on the rear, and that's pretty much it. So very thin. There are no crown keys, however, so you can't really tap to wake it up or interact with the menus. You have to use a touch point below the screen for navigating around, just like on older fitness trackers. The screen itself, again, is not fully touch sensitive, which means, unfortunately, we can't actually tap on it to interact with it. But overall, the key on the bottom here is pretty sensitive and easy to use. It gives off kind of a flat tire design, but really it's just a square screen underneath of a circular kind of body, as you can see there. So it's not a true round display, just to save on cost a little bit. For $20, I think it's forgivable, but it's worth noting it's not a true round screen. A quick look at the main interface. This is the default digital clock. It also shows us a number of steps, the distance walked, as well as the battery percentage remaining. Tapping once shows us a more detailed breakdown of today's uh, distance walked, calories burned, number of steps, and I can also go down to hours slept for the previous night. Here is going to be the heart rate information, which you can turn it on to do a measurement every hour. So sports that I can track include walking, running, cycling, jump rope, badminton, basketball, football, and swimming. So it's not too many sports, but uh, overall it works. Again, there is no GPS unless you connect it with your phone, but it does turn on the heart rate monitor continuously during the entire sports session. We can stop this uh, session here just by long holding on this key, and uh, we can exit out of this menu just by going back to this icon and then long holding again. There is haptic vibration, by the way, so the watch does vibrate to give you confirmation whenever you've tapped on something or whenever you get a new notification, which is pretty nice. But again, because there's only one touch sensitive key, it can be a little tedious to cycle through a longer list as you saw there. Here's a blood pressure measurement, which is using the optical heart rate sensor and then an algorithm on board to estimate your blood pressure uh, based on your heart rate. So not going to be medically grade accurate like dedicated blood pressure measurement tools uh, or devices that use ECG or electrical contacts, but overall gives you an estimate. Same thing goes with the blood oxygen level. It's a nice little extra feature nonetheless that does work all right. We also have notifications which will show up here. You can read them back such as text messages, Facebook, Twitter, but you can't reply to them. And we also have ability to control the music from our phone, things like play, pause, skip 
track commands if you have the music player open on your device, as well as use it as a shutter remote for taking images whenever you open up the camera app. You can tap on this key here to take a shot. Under additional settings, we can take a look at a quick stopwatch. There's also the ability to mute the vibration alarm completely on the watch, and we can also turn the watch off as well as adjust the brightness. There is no ambient light sensor on this watch, by the way, so you do have to uh, adjust this yourself, and this is the maximum brightness. It's not the brightest display in the world because it is just an IPS panel, uh, which means that outdoors it could be a little bit more difficult to see. Uh, with that being said, it does have pretty good viewing angles because it is an IPS display. Uh, no problems there. Uh, it's just, again, not quite as bright or saturated as, say, AMOLED. The companion app is called DAW Fit, and it's a overall binds with the watch pretty quickly, you can pull down to refresh the information. So once synced, you're able to, for example, tap on number of steps and see when you were most active as well as uh, here is a histogram that tells you where you sit in terms of number of steps compared to other users and also your activity over the past few days. To see that, you can tap on the calendar and take a look at your performance, say, on a different date. Same thing goes for sleep. I can tap on this to take a look at my sleep patterns tracked over the past two days when I was in light versus deep sleep versus awake, and it tells you that breakdown and your sleep quality score as well, which is going to be uh, analyzed by comparing the ratio of awake time versus your deep sleep time, as well as your recent trends and when you wake up, when you go to sleep. So very similar to other kind of Huawei and Xiaomi bands, I think that the UI design of even these cheaper generic apps are definitely improving. Now, on a slightly disappointing note, I would say that sleep tracking is probably the weakest element here uh, in terms of it's just not super accurate. A lot of times it would under track the number of hours I've slept. Whenever you go wake up to go to the bathroom, oftentimes it would simply say that you've waken up even if you go back to sleep. With that being said, the accelerometer is pretty precise, so in terms of step counting, it actually does a good job compared to other trackers when I was doing a comparison earlier. And same thing goes with the heart rate monitor. It actually does do a pretty decent job in terms of giving you a rough metric that's similar to what I got on the Xiaomi Mi Band 4. Taking a look at the watch faces, we have basically three to select from. So for instance, I can choose on this second watch face here and it will simply update itself and I'll switch over. This is more of a sporty design in my opinion that shows you slightly more information at a quick glance. And uh, we can also change it to an analog watch face if you want it to be a bit more classy. Uh, so you can see that that's what that looks like, uh, kind of makes it more convincing as a round watch. So that's more or less it for our hands-on review of the Billy K SN58 smartwatch. If you've used more expensive devices like an Apple Watch or an Android Wear device, of course this is not really geared towards you, but it's meant for first-time smartwatch wearers or those on a budget that want something closer to say a fitness tracker but with the body of something like a smartwatch. It is extremely low cost at only around $20 or so and packs a good amount of features and surprisingly good battery performance. But as a whole, I would say it's an attractive and also very slim and lightweight fitness tracker that you can take a closer look at if you want something that's inexpensive but also has a pretty stylish appearance. But if you do want something with more demanding or full-fledged features like GPS, uh, you should probably take a closer look at some other models instead. So thanks for watching and be sure to learn more in the links down below if interested. But for now, that's been our video. That's been the Billy K SN58 